So, Bob and Hungrybox have a very storied team, very successful history, pretty much top three at every Super Major that they've teamed at, which is several. I believe they also won Evo 2014, that was over Mewtwo King and Hacks. A lot of people were saying that PewFat were the favorite to take this, but even as the biggest PewFat fan in the world, I think Plup and Hungrybox are actually a clear favorite. Um, though PewFat did beat Plup and Hungrybox at EVO 2015, I still think Plupbox has a uh, much more consistent track record. Okay, that was not real. So, I really enjoy watching Plop and Hungry Rocks as a student of the game because their t their team isn't as predicated on teamwork as PewFat, but they're always ready for it. It's not like they're neglecting teamwork, they just don't position specifically for it. Um, some teams like teams with Mango actually just don't do teamwork in a lot of situations. Oh. See, like, grab rest is just such a, a ridiculously strong thing that Hungrybox is always going to be looking for it, even if he's kind of far away. And, you know, Pop has good aerial drift, so even if she's, like, a third of the way across the stage, that's uh, pretty likely that you can get it before the other person mashes out. Pop does a really good job bullying Blue Team into the corner, um, but pretty impressive by PewFat that they didn't manage to get... Uh, hurt more for that bad position. Uh, the, the thing that was so good about Plup and Hungrybox when Plup played Samus is that Samus can't really get completely wrecked in like a, a 2v1 and like her recovery like Pup also takes a long time so despite the fact that Sheik is a better character and I'd say a better doubles character Samus is like a stamina, you know, vitality, whatever you want to call it is really strong because she can actually get wombo comboed and just have her recovery punished like pretty badly. Uh, Love by PewFat. Also, by the way, uh, Hungrybox missed the grab rest with PBU at 90. 90 means, you know, a slow mash out. Um, but Hungrybox is definitely the one generally starting the aggression. So he's going to be more uh, tunnel vision on aggression, whereas Plup is going to be more ready to. Uh, and, you know, he's going to be more apt to be watching Hungrybox. He's going to be. Watching for hungry box to create more opportunities. Mm. Sat misses a, a back air there on hungry box that could have led to some pretty, pretty juicy team conversion. Oh god, you can't really do anything about that. That being uh, hungry box killing Sat. Oh, but he had no jumps. Okay. Crouch cancel grab by Plop. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't opt the back throw. Back throw can sometimes uh, combo into rest. If you've seen players like Dark or um, Blue Fox XT in NorCal, they're pretty good at uh, getting rests out of back throw. Maybe because their chic uh, puff team isn't super refined. It is a rare situation where I think uh, the 2 1 gun ledge guard is definitely the right idea. Um, Hungrybox for sure had that ledge guard, and Plop was pretty likely to have his. So it was uh, a guaranteed one and a high chance for two instead of just a guaranteed one. Ooh, I don't know about that grab by Plop. I'm surprised that he went for that. I'm sure he was trying to use the throw invincibility to not get hit for it, but he screwed that up. By the way, throws have uh, about something like seven frames of in invincibility, maybe um, maybe even eight. So that that's a good amount. Uh, you can definitely time your throws to avoid getting punished for them with many characters. Oh, okay, that was sick, but uh, not not honestly that hard. Um, people, you obviously gonna have to di in, so it's trajectory very predictable. Still sick though. I would have would have gotten super hyped if I were commentating. I should have not listened to any of the doubles tournament with commentary. Um, as a student of doubles, I find it often takes away from my focus on studying. So I'd say PPU and SBAT are uh, strongest on FD overall, but it's also the most neutral stage in doubles, so they'll ra rarely counterpick it until maybe like 
game four or five if they lost on it. Oh, they opt to go for it. Um, generally, PFAT always opts to go for Yoshi's, but SFAT actually doesn't really like Yoshi's. He says he feels cramped there, but you know, PPU Sword just commands so much of the stage that they do it anyway. Mm. SFAT doing a lot of risky stuff, but you know that that's SFAT's strength that he puts the fear in his opponents by kind of going crazy. I think doubles really plays to his uh, free flowing style because it's really a lot more um, heavy in terms of you know fighting in close quarters, tricking your opponents like that. So you just jump, he just <laughs> super risky. You just like jump to the middle of them and he up smash them. Uh, that was good by Sfat, even though he like missed that falling up air or whatever. It was it was still good. He he managed to get the up smash. I'm not even sure the up air would have killed. So it wouldn't it didn't kill PPU and he almost got a double kill really. So it was still good. Cool tipper back throw. Or uh, down throw, rather. I can't really tell the difference between Marth sometimes. Marth and Sheik, both characters that have an, an excellent throw to Team Combo with in their um, back throw for Sheik and I believe down throw for Marth. Oh god, PB just reads a plup and tippers him, but. Mm, doesn't manage to get back to the stage in time to Edgehog. Definitely a, a flub by PBU, but. Doesn't matter. Ooh, fast mash by S but he's at such a low percent. Uh, not, no surprise. One thing I noticed is that S often misses uh, team tech chase opportunities. Maybe he's just uh, too scared of exposing himself with hungry box around. Because like it was pretty obvious which way Plup would tech. Yeah, this is that's. Oh, hungry box with a weird SD, but that's. This kind of a situation where Sheik and uh, Pop are just so good at going down and ledge guarding Fox, you're going to have a pretty much impossible time to get that counter hunt, get the counter kill on whoever goes off stage because their teammate's just going to make it safe for them. Whereas characters like uh, Falcon or Fox, if they go down off the stage, they're really uh, likely to get gimped. Hmm. Excellent uh, by PBU occupying Plup there, so Plup was not able to ledger on SFAT. SFAT definitely wouldn't have died, or would have died if PBU had had his back. Oh god, this game is destructive. Five stock. Sometimes doubles just goes that way because there are so many situations that can be four stock swings, though. You're like, Everyone's at the ledge, and then two people die. If somebody messes up, the other two people can die. So, blowouts happen more in doubles. It's not as indicative of a skill disparity as it is in singles. There's not there's not nearly as much neutral game in doubles as in singles. Or even if there might be as much neutral game in terms of pure interactions, but not as like there's not as much time that's spent in the neutral game. Almost all the time, somebody's at an advantage. Green team's pretty much been at an advantage this whole time. See, now both of them off the stage. Um, right there, they don't opt to do a team ledger out of the way, but Jinx is pretty slow, so it's hard for uh, it's hard for HFox to ever come in team ledge guard on Plup side of the stage. So it's more up to Plup to like run across the stage and choose. But Sheik's such a strong ledge guard character that it's pretty unlikely that Plup's also going to opt to run across the stage and not ledge guard on his side. That said, uh, PBU has really excellent recovery, so I think it would be a good idea to do that sometimes. Oh, wow. I see uh, PBU up tilted SFAT to get him out of a potential platform tech chase into like ref setup by Hungrybox. That's really cool. Remember, sometimes hitting your partner is good. Sometimes you get them out of trouble by hitting them, such as um, if, if I stomp your partner and I'm going to knee them, just hit us both. Then you won't get kneed. Okay, see, right here, SFAT definitely should not have spent all that time trying to ledge guard Plup. He only got one hit out of it, and it ended up uh, guaranteeing PBU's death. But again, SFAT, as the main aggressor on the team, is going to have a lot harder of a time eyeing PBU's position. And PBU is a player who's known for being really autonomous in terms of uh, having a strong defense and not needing help, So, and also having really good recovery. So SFAT is definitely used to not having to help PPU as much as he might have to help other partners. Uh, 
Uh, see, I like that PPU takes the back line, goes towards the edge of the stage. He, he would retreat to the edge if Plup tried to pursue him. And Plup is smart, though, so Plup didn't go there because that would have just gotten him cornered. Uh, pretty much all the worst team players would have gone after PPU because he's at 100%. Plup, a sleeper, amazing doubles player. Just great results. And that, in a lot of ways, I would say Plup is the PPU of uh, the other team where... He's kind of always got hungry boxes back. He's always ready to do the right thing, even though he doesn't seem to be the, uh, I don't know, he doesn't seem to be the most like situation creating player. He's just always ready for the situation. Uh, I love look at that Pufet just strategizing in the middle of the match. And I Esmat, I don't know what he was saying to you there. I'm not I'm not sure what he was thinking, but Esmat and let's say Shroom definitely two players who you kind of often need to uh, talk, strategize with mid-match. Um, so also good to see that he's comfortable strategizing himself and seeing the adaptations. More often, I think it would be the support player who has the clearer view of the situation because they're watching the whole screen more actively. I would say support is definitely an easier role to play than carry overall, but uh, people who are used to being the aggressors and, and playing the more carry role have a really hard time uh, transitioning to support because they're not used to seeing, to eyeing the stage in the same way, in the right way. Surprised people you didn't offer a downer there, but it wouldn't have killed anyway. Also, uh, man, PBU was really scared right there. If he had gotten a shield grab and Plop, it would have guaranteed a kill. But I guess he didn't want to get Nair out of shield by Plop, which could have killed PBU. Uh, being over 100 makes... Oh, God. Esfat definitely standing too far away there. Should stand a lot closer to the ledge. But being over 100 uh, should really, like, guarantee Sheik's death when you're ledge guarding like this in doubles because uh, normally Sheik can poof and then uh, get to the ledge after your roll is done. But if you're over 100, you occupy the ledge for so long that it's actually really nice to ledge guard Sheik with the over 100 roll in nobles. Um, I believe they counterpick Dreamland, yeah. Dreamland definitely uh, plot boxer's best counterpick. It was interesting that they went to Battlefield like in two out of three sets as their first counterpick. Um, yeah. In fact, yeah, they did on this set. Last game, they, they picked Battlefield. I guess they have some meta for wanting to save their best counter pick because it's not just that. It's not really the floaty advantage that's so much so important here, but it's actually, it's really the a nerf to PPU a lot. Like, he has so much less kill power, and he also controls so much less of the stage with the sword. So this is just a, a really good anti Marth pick. Even some people think Marth isn't the bat, that bad on Dreamland and singles. He's he's definitely bad in doubles on the stage. Mm. See, Plup could have uh, got a pick up on PPU and kept them both on stage. He, he didn't. He kind of messed that up. But even so, he's ready for the next option, and he still like managed to get a hit on Svat. Uh, I think two of the things that are really impressive about. Uh, Plup and Hungrybox, is that even when situations go badly, they're immediately ready for the next option. They never like have a moment of breathing where they're uh, flustered and then pick a poor pick a poor option. Man, Plup standing really far away from Hungrybox there, um, getting zoned out by PPU, and then PPU I think understood that Plup wanted to come in because Plup was so far away, but then he just immediately hit him out of his movement. Cool, cool platform stuff by SFAT. Uh, manages to get a good amount of percent on Puff. Normally, I would say um, he shouldn't kind of like tunnel vision on somebody up there. But honestly, on Puff, if you can get if you can get over like thirty percent from anything, that's a huge deal. Because once Puff is at like sixty, she has to be scared of. Yeah, honestly, even when Puff is at thirty, she can easily get Fox back air into Marth fair into. Fox back air into Marth fair into up air, or even even a three piece. On a smaller stage, a three piece back air fair up air will will kill Puff. I just said a five piece because it's Dreamland, but uh, 
Mm -hmm. PB really fishing for that grab, but he knows that it's pretty safe because he won't die from a rest at zero, and even if, if Hungry Bucks can't rest because it won't kill PB and then he'll get killed for it. Really good idea to fish for the rest, or for the grab in that situation. Oh, that was really smart of uh, PB to go for that, to try to hit um, SVAT out of the rest, but... Uh, I don't know, maybe he forgot SVAT's percent. Otherwise, you'd think he would go for, like, a side B, maybe? Jab, something like that. See, that, that that's really smart, too. PBU doesn't, like, grab the ledge right away. See, he sits there for a moment, and he, he makes sure that Hungrybox is properly zoned out, so Hungrybox can't uh, get to the ledge and stay flop. And then he grabs the ledge once, once uh, Hungrybox is zoned out. Really nice about Hungrybox as well, uh, getting to the ledge right there. Sometimes it can be hard. Or Puff, Puff has like a luxury where she can navigate around characters and like steal the ledge, but uh, it can still be pretty hard. That's that smartly going for the slab of meat there. Slab of meat is where you just treat your partner like a slab of meat and hit them. Because uh, he didn't want to like take his time with the S match. He just wanted to guarantee that they get it. Surprised that Hungry Box wasn't ready to help Plop and uh, go off with a down air. That uh, I guess no one really knows Zelda's recovery, honestly. But yeah, Gravely's up smash, really standard right there. Um, okay, let me let me do one more thing, show one more thing. I just want to reiterate a, an important point that we talked about before I end my analysis on that. It's, it's about that, uh, let's show again, zoning out while people are ledge guarding. So one of the worst things you can do in doubles, in fact, like, pretty much the worst thing, oh, you know, there's me from the other night when I was talking about this, um, pretty much the worst thing you can, I, I, I say this link because I want to talk about it, pretty much the worst thing you can do is when somebody's hit off, like, a floatier character with a slow recovery, even the character like Falcon, with the Falcon kick, don't grab the ledge right away. Make sure to take care of whatever's going on on stage, and then grab the ledge. So, uh, here, check, check, check this out, check this out, right here. See, Flub is off stage, Hungry Box is across the stage. PBU, first of all, is not going to try to mess with Hungry Box. That's just, that would be really dumb. See, okay, now, Flub, Flub is going off. Now that SVAT went towards the center of the stage to, to collectively zone out Hungrybox to make sure he couldn't help the ledge guard. And then, uh, and then they go, both go back to the other side of the stage after Hungrybox is dealt with and can't help Plup. And then they ledge guard, uh, and then they ledge guard Plup together. He does wave land up smash and he messes up, but <laughs> that's not the point. All right, I'm glad I saved that link.